So, if you are someone who's ever thought to themselves, oh, my niche is so oversaturated. There are so many people in my niche. How can I possibly stand out? I'm doomed for life, right? If you've thought anything similar to that, then this is gonna be a video that you're definitely gonna wanna watch. You're gonna wanna get a notepad, a pen and paper, make some notes because I'm gonna be diving into my top tips for standing out as a content creator. But before I do, if you enjoy content like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and to turn on your notifications because I upload content every single week. So, there is no such thing as an oversaturated niche. At least that's what I like to tell people because I feel like it, it puts their mind at rest. I am well aware that there are some niches which have a lot of creators and influencers inside them. I am totally aware of that. Personally, I like to see that more as a positive thing. If you're in a niche where there are loads and loads of creators, that just means that it's a popular niche, <laughs> right? Let's see it as a positive thing. Also, if we approach this whole conversation from this abundance mindset of there's enough brand partners in the world for us to work with. There are enough product ideas for us all to come up with as content creators for our niche. There are enough people who are interested in our niche for us all to grow, right? Abundance mindset, there's enough of everything to go around so it really shouldn't matter if there are millions of other creators in your niche or if there's just five. With all of that in mind, I still know that we do need to put some effort to try and stand out from time to time. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is really make sure that you've defined what your USP is. And your USP is marketing talk for your unique selling point. I sometimes like to call it a special source because I just think that sounds funner. Let's call it special source. What's your special source? That's what we've got to figure out. A lot of people get stuck when it comes to defining what their special source is. And the reason why is because the idea of figuring out what makes you special feels very daunting, right? It makes you think, well, my gosh, do I need to have some kind of superpower in order to be special? Luckily, you do not. It could be something as simple as you approaching a topic or a niche from a slightly different angle, right? So maybe you're someone who loves fashion and actually your sense of style tends to be a bit old school, a bit 70s. Maybe how you approach the fashion niche is to really go hard on that 70s look. Maybe your whole profile, your social media content, all of it is about the 70s and you really dial up the fact that that is the era where you really love that style of fashion. Maybe you talk about history from the 70s. Do you see how that small tweak, that doesn't necessarily mean that your content has to be different because it's already aligned with the type of content you would share, but by pulling out the part of your content which makes you unique, you've managed to really set yourself apart from your other content creators. And if we carry on with the fashion niche, is there a different perspective that you could tackle this niche from? Now, I know this example has probably been used a few times now, so maybe it's not unique in the sense that there's only a handful of people doing it, but I still think it's unique in the sense that there's not a ton of people doing it. So a lot of creators now will approach the fashion niche from a sustainability standpoint. They'll focus on how you can restyle items that you already own. They'll focus on how you can find high quality items which don't cost a lot, but which will allow you to be more sustainable. Maybe they'll focus on sustainable brands in particular. These different perspectives, this different way of approaching this niche will allow them to stand out from other creators in their niche who might have the same aesthetic to them, but who is not going down the sustainability route right? So just because an idea may not be completely unique, you're not the only one doing it, it'll be very difficult for you to find something where you're literally the only person. Just because you're not the only one doing it, even if it allows you to break down your niche a little bit further to make you even more unique in itself, then that is going to help you stand out from your fellow creators. Another thing you could do to stand out on social media as a content creator is to figure out what your why is. And the reason why this will instantly allow you to stand out is because most creators don't have this. And if they do have it, they don't talk about it a lot. In fact, I'm actually willing to admit that I probably don't talk about my why enough. So I fall within that bracket as well. If you don't know what I mean by a why, it's basically a strong purpose. It's like the reason for you creating content. And your why should not be monetary or like growth focused. So it shouldn't be like, oh, I create content because I want to work with brands. I create content because I want to make loads of money in my business. Or or I make content because I want to have 100,000 followers. That's not what our why should be. It should be deeper and it should be focused on more of an impact. So for example, my why, I create this content because I want to help other people realize their dreams of being content creators and actually start successful businesses as a result. I watched other content creators when I was getting started with my journey or before I even started my journey and it was watching them 
just go for their dreams and achieve these amazing things. That's what got me to take the leap two years ago and start my channel and my life has completely changed ever since I made that decision. Drastically, drastically changed and it probably will never be the same again, right? So I feel incredibly to be fortunate to have experienced that. So I create content to help other people experience something similar, right? So what's your why? Are you creating content because you want to help women feel more comfortable in the clothes that they wear? Are you creating content because you want to help people from your generation have a better grasp on how to manage money and their finances? Like, what is your why? What is that driving force? What gives you that push to create content? Like, what is that thing that you're doing? And when you define that, talk about it. Create a highlight if you're on Instagram about your why, right? Mention it in your content every now and again. Just really focus and dial that up because I think that's gonna really, really help you stand out. One of the easiest ways for you to stand out as a content creator is to be yourself. And I know that sounds so corny, but I'm just gonna need you to stick with me here. Now, this is one of the easiest routes for you to stand out because there is no one else like you. So if you literally allow yourself to relax in your content and to really show who you are in your videos and your photos and your captions, if you allow yourself to really showcase your own personality, you will naturally stand out because there is no one else on this planet who has the same personality as you. If you're wondering on how to get started with that, because it's one of those pieces of advice what just don't feel tangible, be yourself. It's like, okay, cool, but how? So if you're wondering how to get started going about that, like showing up as your true authentic self online, what I want you to start by doing is identifying any quirks that you have. So sometimes it's the fact that you say things funny. Sometimes for me, like one of my quirks, I'm not proud of this one, but like I always get phrases wrong and like I pronounce things wrong. I use all these fancy words, but I just pronounce them completely wrong and I say the wrong phrase. I don't edit that out in my content. I will literally just be like, is that the phrase? How do you pronounce it? I just leave it in there because that is actually me. And if you met me in real life, like that is how I speak and that's how I communicate. So I leave that in there because whilst it may not be a positive thing, it's me, it's unique to me. I'm gonna leave it in there. So what are some quirks from you? Maybe it's to do with where you're from and your, you know, your quirks of your country or your hometown. I'm very British, but not just British, I'm like very much a Londoner and I don't hide that back in my content either. What I could do is I could try my best not to say or use like London slang or pronounce things in a way which really show where I'm from and dial that back, which is what a lot of creators do without even thinking. They dial back all these unique quirks and all these amazing things about themselves out of fear of judgment. But in reality, what we should be doing is leaning into those things because those are the things what truly allow you to stand out. All right, another thing you can do is to have an opinion and to voice that opinion. So I'm specifically talking about your niche here. Obviously you can have you can have other opinions, but I'm more thinking in relation to your niche. So do you have a specific opinion on something that's being spoken about a lot within your niche? This is not for the faint hearted, this one, because obviously people are gonna have different opinions to you and you've gotta be okay with that. You also have to be open to listening to other people's opinions and maybe even getting into a bit of a debate, right? And I mean, I feel like I shouldn't have to specify this, but when I'm talking about having an opinion, I'm not talking about having opinions which are offensive and unethical and racist and sexist and homophobic and all of that stuff. Like, I feel like I shouldn't even need to specify that, but in case I do need to specify it, at least I've got it out of the way. I'm talking about having an opinion on the state of the fashion industry. I'm talking about having an opinion on whether influencers should work with brands for free or not, right? Just using my niche as an example. So I'm talking about having opinions like that. When you have an opinion and you've researched that opinion, you're not just kind of coming out with something with, without actually truly understanding the subject that you're speaking about. When you have an opinion, you've researched it, you feel confident in the opinion that you're sharing and it's not offending anyone share it that's what helps you stand out people will start to know you as the creator who doesn't agree with fast fashion people will start to know you as the entrepreneur who believes in a slow life right people start to see you as the creator who's anti-hustle culture literally as i was saying those different examples i had content creators in my head who i attribute to those specific opinions because they are so vocal when it comes to sustainability when it comes to slow life when it comes to anti-hustle culture they're so vocal with their beliefs in those things that i now attribute them to those things yes there will be people who may not want to follow you anymore as a result of that opinion fortunately because your opinion isn't offensive it's not like people are going to be like oh i hate this person what they might do though is think actually 
I am all for fast fashion fashion or actually I'm all for the hustle and that mentality so actually you're not for me and that's okay if anything I think that's a good thing you want to have people in your audience who are really aligned with you and your values and stuff so if anything I think it's a good thing so again that one isn't for the faint-hearted but if you have an opinion and it's a well-researched well opinion on your niche doesn't offend anyone voice it final tip for you do not ignore the little things so I was thinking about this recently because someone DM'd me saying, hey, I just found this new adhesive, like sticker thing um, for your gallery wall, right? She sent it to me because she was like, you always talk about how your photos fall down. So when I saw this, I thought of you. And it made me think like, oh my God, the gallery wall has somehow become part of my personality, which I'm all here for, right? I talk about when it's dropped, I share the fact that I'm trying different things and it won't stay up. I've, I've literally have a YouTube video where one of the pictures fall down whilst I'm speaking, right? It's become part of my personality. And these little things will help me stand out and will help people differentiate me as a creator. If you've got a puppy who barks all the time when you're filming, like leave the barks in there, right? If you have builders who walk in the back of your shot every now and again, leave that in there as long as they're okay with being in, in your content. Like all these little things that you probably see as annoying or things that are making your content look less perfect are actually helping you become more unique and are actually helping you stand out. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. If you found it useful, please can you like and comment and do all that stuff that I'm supposed to ask you to do and if you feel like hanging around I recommend watching this video it's all about my entire content creation workflow for Instagram thank you so much for watching as always I cannot wait to see you in my next video